Uh, okay, so uh, a few months ago, um, we were listening, through a, listening to a talk about uh, e e DNS Flag Day coming up, and someone was talking about the experiences of running the DNS Flag Day code over a couple of TLDs. So some of us said, that'd be interesting for, for us at ICANN to try to do this with all of the, the TLDs that we have. Um, and so this is a talk about the attempt to do this. Now, of course, um, I won't have the same nice graphics that they had in that talk then. For one thing, we're after the flag day, so it wouldn't really matter as much. Um, but it was an interesting experience to talk about that. So um, to uh, give you an idea of what this would entail was that if I actually ran every single test that was going to happen here, I'd have 11 billion digs uh, executed. Um, I didn't do that. I, I mimicked doing 11 billion digs for this. Uh, but that's uh, the size of what we, we have. We have a lot of information. Uh, now, the code that I used, I know that, that as, as time went by, the EDNS test code that ISC developed, um, it, it changed over time. And when I met with the developer, Mark Andrews, back in October of last year, he gave me a, a, a file, which, a, a zip file of his stuff. I don't know what version it is. I just have his stuff. And as I worked on it, he kept saying, we should go to the GitHub and get my stuff that's now in C. And at that point, it was too late for me to, to with all the work, getting his stuff to work, I had, I had just committed too much. So I'm using a bunch of uh, shell scripts that he had written to do the, the, all these digs out there, which, are, which is underneath of everybody else's work out there. Um, I know he said that he has more efficient C code. I didn't use that. So this is not really a judgment of this code. Uh, so uh, why? why? Why did we go ahead and do this? Uh, ICANN has a contractual relationship with about 80% of the TLDs. Um, that means of the 1,500 or so TLDs out there, 1,200 of them, I have access to their zone files uh, as a result of that. That doesn't mean I have 80% of all of the internet usage of the DNS. It's just 80% of the TLDs because, of course, you know, um, some CC TLDs, which I don't have any of, are very big, right? And a lot of GTLDs. I could, but I'm trying to, just to make it a little easier to pipeline the stuff. But also, on the other hand, a lot of GTLDs are very small. So the distribution doesn't say, I don't want to promise I have everything out there, but I have a lot of GTLDs out there. Um, so uh, basically, we thought it would be good to run over these 1,200 TLDs out there. Uh, the other thing, though, is that I knew that at the start, of the, a couple of things I knew would not play well. One is I wouldn't have a graph reach TLD. I don't want to do that. I'm not racing TLD versus TLD. It's not fair for us to do that. We don't have that as a, uh, a thing that we grade TLDs on in any way. Um, also, all of the alerting that Mark Andrews was doing, we don't have access to that. That's a whole other department of who has the, the contact out there. But it's interesting for us as a protocol now to look at the health of the system. So uh, the we got some insight into the eating a zero situation, not a whole lot because Frankly, by the time we got down to that part of the data, we had a lot of work and didn't do a lot of analysis. Um, but we're, what's going on now is we ha we're ha I've been building a platform for eating zone files, uh, parsing them and pulling things out there and finding things. In fact, I've moved on to other projects already since I did these slides last week, and I'm thinking of the new stuff already. Uh, what, uh, one of the, uh, the lessons from the KSK Roller Project was that management of the Internet is pretty weak. It's, hard, it's a hard-to-manage network, so we're looking... Our, our, one of our interests is to make sure that, or to see what we can do to manage through measurement what's happening out there, to assess whether this is being done, that's not being done, how well our operators are uh, linking things up there. Like, is our glue records a good idea? What, are the glue records good? And all, but that, that's, that's further research than this. Uh, so to uh, start quantifying things, the workload we had, um, 1,228 uh, zone files, uh, 193 million delegations out of that. It's a lot. Uh, 450 million NS records alone through all of this. Uh, glue records, 3 million, um, mostly uh, V4. And I will, I will not go through all the numbers, of course. It's Sunday afternoon and we're at work. Uh, graphs, I don't have any. Um, I'm too lazy. Um, I'm, I'm not like Roy. I'm the opposite of Roy. I don't like graphs. Um, I should, but I don't. Um, now, the problem here is that I have thousands of graphs, one for each TLD. You're not going to go through that. Um, on the other hand, I think for most of this, any kind of graph that you is a long tail distribution, just for the most part, I'll tell you when it's not. Um, and the other ground rules, I don't like to name names. Um, I do have one really large GTLD we all know about, um, and you, I'm not going to talk about it, but I have a run really big one. Everything else is roughly less than that. In fact, the, the one big one I have 
It takes half the processing time just to parse all of them together. In fact, I did a, I did a uh, race one time where I parsed it in one, one process, parsed all the others, and they tied at the end. Uh, 1,227 to 1, the same process. Uh, Two-thirds of that 11 billion, two-thirds of all of my results would it be in that one big TLD and so on and so forth. So uh, things are kind of uh, skewed. No CCTLD data in it, this, just to make it, it's, it's easy. I could get the stuff, but I don't want to mix apples and oranges in some sense. Um, and the only, ARPA is the only thing in reverse map that pops up here, because we happen to have that. And uh, one thing, when I get to the IP addresses, I change them too, because I know in Europe, IP addresses are like illegal to mention, I think. So anyway, um, so name server names, uh, 3.2 million name server names. Almost none of them have IDN. Operators now still only work in ASCII. The infrastructure is still pretty much an ASCII thing. Uh, over 99% of all the name servers are just ASCII name servers. Um, that means the tools that get into IDN sometimes may be a bit premature for the operators out there. I know there was a flap about uh, one tool suddenly recognizing uh, uh, the, the native label, labels and that screwed up scripts, and I, I have bitten by that too. Um, most, of the TL, most of the name servers that I deal with are in GTLDs, so it's not too surprising. Uh, but 85% of all the GTLDs name servers were actually in a GTLD, the name itself. Um, and again, it's pretty much still all ASCII and pretty much still GTLDs. Uh, glue records, um, I have 3.2 million glue records. Of that, 2.7 million were unique addresses. Um, almost all V4, not too surprising. Uh, what I found su surprising, though, at the bottom of this, I have name servers that only have V4 is still a huge number compared to dual stack. I thought dual stack would be more mature. I, I, that's the first number here that surprised me was that I thought dual stack was just a given and not at all, not in the glue records. Uh, v, there are 5,000 brave souls in V6 only. Idiots, I mean idiots. Um, I, 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 I will say the first that they were very smart people in alternate universes. <laughs> Uh, glue addresses per name server, mildly interesting. Um, uh, no, there were three quarter of a million name servers that had no glue. Now, I should point out, after I did the slide, I realized it's actually not really a bad number because 450,000 of them were in uh, CCTLDs, which means I don't have that glue. It's very important. Now, that's why it's good to have these, the split. So uh, most of the ones that have no glue in there were glue I shouldn't have had anyway. So that's excusable, very excusable. Others just because of name servers that are somewhere else. And then I'm discovering now there's a lot of bad glue, but that's beside the point. Um, most servers have one glue. Uh, this is not a long tail situation. It's kind of funny. It goes uh, 2 million for one, then down to 50,000, down to 3,000, then back to 69,000 for four, and so on. Uh, and by the way, 0 to 13 is the entire range of values for this graph. There's no, nothing below that. This is all of it. Because, you know, we can only have 13 NS records because by law it's, never mind. <laughs> a lot of registries actually assume that when they, when they wrote their original code, so it stayed that way. Um, now, uh, in this study, uh, some later, later on I'll talk about a bit more about addresses. The, it's kind of murky. I call this muddy data because the glue records, studying glue records itself as glue records has a whole lot of things I can do with it. I'm doing that right now at my next level. Um, but this tool would actually then, go, if you gave it zero glue, it would go out and get authoritative data and then mix it all together. So some of my stuff about addresses later on a little muddy out there, but interesting to do. Uh, eventually, I would like to separate that and do what's authoritative versions of the data versus the glue and see how we've kept that up to date. Uh, so uh, zones per name server, um, one point, almost 2 million uh, name servers out there of the 3.2 million only do one zone. Now, that could be vanity naming, could be all you know, different names for the same process, but that's the way it lines up with the NS records. Uh, I go down there, you see this is a long tail, and then Maxwell, the next slide was kind of interesting. Uh, there is a name server out there that has over 4 million zones on it. Okay, it's, mm, no. I thought, what I find interesting is that I, 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 mocked up, I, I mucked up the names on purpose, of course, because I don't like naming names, but the two and the one in the first two lines is, is on purpose. Some operators, NS2, has more zones than NS1 at the 4 million mark. I would think if I had that many zones out there, I would have NS1 be bigger because all the other ones are. Um, and, or I would have it balanced or I'd have it automated in some way, but it's your, it's your, it's your, your, your name servers? No, no, it's not. <laughs> no, um, I, I sometimes see that um, a domain will either have NS1 and NS2 right. or some name server owned by the domain owner 
right. plus NS2. But yeah. for that, the difference is too small. Right. Yeah, it's just interesting that you're saying that in some cases you see the owner in NS2. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. uh, for the recording, basically. Yeah. Uh, so, but the other ones, the other big ones, um, and as names are one and two, and these, these are the top, th top six name servers out there, and it falls down quickly. There were a couple more, two million, but everything else fell right down. But I, I just thought it was humorous that the top one there um, had a few more zones on two than one, and that's it, weird. Okay, so multi tenant this actually came from the conversation, um, this idea that how many zones are actually on a process? I mean, you have a, you have a name server process, right? You have a name server addresses, you have a name server names, and so on. And I've worked in places where I know how we mix and match these things. It'd be interesting to be able to trace that out. This study can kind of hint at that, but I haven't gotten there because in some cases we have vanity IP addresses, vanity name servers out there. We, that's what gives you the high one-to-one -one situation. There are ways to figure this out over time um, and maybe interesting to find out to help look at what's the structure of the DNS hosting out there. How many, how many major operators out there, how many minor operators out there, so we can start balancing some of our assumptions about the, the uh, CDNS, CDS records, who are you talking to out there. I think it's interesting to know who's doing that and the consolidation stuff and you know, the whole Dyne uh, attack a couple years ago that, you know, anyway. Uh, so it would be interesting to know who has what where. Uh, TLDs per name server, this is not as interesting, but I put it up here anyway. Um, most name servers only have one TLD represented, meaning the zone that they serve is in one TLD. Um, there were two name servers that had zones and 539 TLDs out there. Hosters can do what they want. Uh, so now, compressing the tests. Now, many people have done this, recognize the idea that it, the way this thing worked for every zone on every name server's IP address would run the set of digs. And it's probably not necessarily do that, so we'll just pick one zone and just... So, Okay, so I did that. I, I put, picked out one. I thought there'd be a 144 to one uh, compression value in doing that, giving that, that 144 zones per name server if I did a struck, straight out average, um, which meant basically the middle here expected tests. I expected to have 2.7 million tests plus some unknown number for the glue list because they wouldn't be discovered until I ran the tool. Uh, now the, and the rest would, um, oh, why, I asked, why I bothered to put this up here was that I had to estimate how many VMs I needed to run all the stuff, and that's why it was important to me. Um, so when I launched it, I came back, I had 3.5 million total of tests out there. Um, it breaks down a certain way. Now, when I expanded back by now saying for this name server, all the zones I multiplied, that was almost a billion things tested, 999 million and so on. Uh, that was a 283 to 1 expansion. I had forgot about addresses multiplying in there. Uh, I was able to actually do all the parsing and take all the data in 24 hours, which I find important because it's fresh. Analysis took another day or two of the data, but at least the data was all pretty fresh from the uh, zone file. Uh, for the glue list, um, I found uh, basically most of them only had one. And again, the, uh, that 1465 is very close to the number of name servers that were in CCTLD, so that's not too surprising that I got one out there. Uh, one of the servers uh, that had no glue in, the, in my files had 58 address records. That, that's a top end. Uh, there's one at 33, and the long tail applies here. Uh, and it's interesting to see with those. Now, <coughs> interesting, looking at just the addresses. I'm oh, sorry, I got a question. Yeah. How many were errors? Um, well, the first, the first one, 210,000, were either NX domain or no error, no, no data. Yeah, but was oh, okay, so they are errors. Right, right. so these, these, these represent name servers of zones that are obviously, well, these are name servers that will not answer. Right? Uh, probably the zone is probably broken. I haven't gotten too far into that, but I'm sure there are some no zones out there whose old name servers are, just don't work. Oh, no error, no error, oh, sorry, no error is the, it, when you ask a question in, in DNS and it, it turns out the name you want has no information anywhere, yeah. that's called an NX domain, right? Okay, yeah. But if, you, if the name exists, the, the name actually has, has information about it, but doesn't have address records, we call it no error, no data. Yeah. Sorry, that, that, that's a, a, a protocol uh, jargon in there. So that meant that, that, that the name existed, but it wasn't there to give you an address, so. so a C name, it could be a MX record, t t TXT record, it could be a delegation, it could be anything, but it didn't have an address record. So and I didn't dive into why. So this is what I call muddy data. This is glue record and authoritative data. Um, 
so let me just skip across here to V4. Uh, in V4, there were 1.1 million addresses, 692,000, about half of them were one name server had one IP address. The other ones, there was some sharing going on. Um, and what I have here is uh, some of the A1B1 stands for slash 16, which had 332,993 name servers named in that slash 16. It doesn't say a whole lot at the top. Uh, but if you look into the slash, um, the slash 24, A1B1C1, there was almost all of them were there. And if you go down further in the slash 24, the slash 24, I'm sorry, I, I think the slashes are off. All of them are pretty much in one slash 24, which means now in the 255 range, all those names are all fitting into that. And I'll go into the next slide because it's really funny to look at that. Um, to give, to give, and also to give you a size of scale, the next 16 out there, A2B2, again, I obfuscated the IP numbers, had only 46,000 name servers out there, and so on. The structure, it does, this, is less, this is less interesting, you don't see the real numbers. Um, down, down in the top six, there was one that showed more of an even distribution of, there were 21,000 name servers in this slash 16, and there were about 5,000 each of the slash 24s below that. Um, something that looked more natural. For, the, for that one really large slash 24, I, do, I, I actually have these counts for each of, the, each of the numbers that appear there. There are 16 um, addresses in that slash 20, uh, that 255, the slash 24. Um, they have between 21,000 and 20,500 names. So obviously this is, someone has done this on purpose, where they put all these names on here. And it's just really funny. These two are two blocks of eight addresses. Um, they, they do belong to one provider because I know what the, I know what the, uh, the names were in there. Um, but the, the other thing that's funny about usually when I do things like that, I usually like to have routable blocks. These don't line up with CIDR blocks, so I don't know what the deal is here. They just someone has these 16 addresses and put in 330,000 name server names in that spot, and they are running. So, and they have to be inside of a hosting provider because they can't route that. You can't route a slash 29, which is what that would be. But it's not even a slash 29 because routing would have been like four routes or whatever. Sorry. Anyway, I just found this really quirky. Uh, and then to give you the scale, these are the next, big, next ones, B, C, and D were the next blocks that were that big. So, um, again, this all goes back to finding out how many people are sharing an IP address for name servers. Now, V6, because V6 has so few addresses available, um, I looked to see who was sharing there. And there is some sharing there. Um, and... Uh, the, it, the, in one slash 48, 48 bits out of 128 bits, there are uh, 2,000 names. That's not, that's not a big deal. That seems, that's, there's a lot of addresses there. But the next two, um, add two and add three, have all of those addresses on one address. A slash 128 is the full address. So there were uh, 1,751 name server names pointing to address three and address um, or those two addresses, address th three in those two blocks. So someone out there put uh, so that many names to one V6 address. They, apparently they're running out of space. I don't know. Um, and then to give you an idea that uh, there are other culprits out there, if you look at single IPv6 addresses, 867 down to 416, there are, there are that many name servers per that address, which I don't show because it's illegal to show ad addresses, I guess. Um, but some people are actually sharing address in V6. We must break this habit, folks. So, um, so um, almost at the end of my slides, and I haven't gotten ED in a zero yet. Um, but it's interesting how much work, there's much work to get me done for this. Um, so, uh, well, okay, I'm gonna just go into this, and I have these results. Uh, th these were the results that came out of the testing. Um, now, if you see in here, I have 997 millions total at the bottom here a total test that would have been run. This is, these are the virtual tests being done. 91% uh, said the DNS was okay, which I find really high, which is good, um, considering all the other issues I found. For eDNS0, 76% said they were okay, because these are name servers, not zones, and concern are over zones and operators and all that. Uh, for, ED, for the DO bit, which I expect to be high too, 77% said okay there. And Shane, you look... Is that higher than the last one? Yeah. Um, yeah. Good course. I mean, a good reason to squint your face up. Yeah. The DO bit requires EDNS zero, right? Yeah. Right. So let me let me repeat this. You're saying that the DO bit here, which has higher 
good, then basic EDNS is kind of funny because EDO requires EDNS zero. That's just for the, the recording. Yeah, 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 it, it, yeah. So yeah, that happened. EDNS TCP, 58%. Um, I, I, there, there were like 11 tests. I didn't put them all in here. I picked the ones that seemed the most obvious to just talk about. This one seemed to be uh, in trouble. Um, of course, if it really was in trouble, oh, I have 10 whole minutes to go. Let me, let me tell you a story about Oh, okay. So, um, so the, uh, I, I figured on one hand, you know, we, it's February 3rd now, two days past Flag Day, and if, the, if Rome was burning, we'd have known about it by now. Um, but I haven't heard anything about that. In fact, I didn't see any talks here about EDS Zero Flag Day at all. <laughs> so i assuming that it kind of went well. So, um, so, so I'm not, I, again, I didn't really spend as much time on this because we ran out of time, and also it was so much fun setting up the experiments. Uh, and the address not fa fa failures, um, and this actually goes to a question earlier. Uh, I have no address records and no addresses found because I forgot to put the NX domain in here. No address records was the NX domains. These are, these are the names. They're 76% or 75% or so of all the ones that had no address didn't exist in the DNS. But a quarter of that were names that had something other than an address record. So that's, that's how that melted down. So uh, lessons learned. Uh, one thing I'd say for this tool is that it, I tried to get a clear yes or no out of the tool. And I was given a long-winded response about how you had to judge all this stuff. Don't you get, I get the reason. It would be nicer if this tool had given us thumb up or thumb down for the server's address if we EDS zero compliance. But that was kind of out. But that wasn't going to happen. Um, the, this, to me, the important thing was that it gave me a framework now for studying other parts of the registration system. Um, I'm trying to get so that I, I want the data to be done in a day, so it's fresh data. It may take longer to anal analyze this stuff. Um, but there are a lot of things in there that we can go in and look at. Um, one thing that I've always been concerned about, and the reason why I have so many numbers and counts here, is that I'm always into, have I actually captured all the results? And I'm trying to make sure I don't leave anything on the table. Um, Timeouts always bug me. I want to make sure that I know how to handle these things. So if you're writing tools out there, uh, be really good about making sure that every response that comes back is, is, is recognized by the requester um, and that we can count to make sure that we have everything accounted for. Because I found in here that there were some places that I realized I missed something and it opened up a door like, oh, there was a bug I forgot about a certain set of servers order for a while. Uh, so the goal of this is to improve the ability to manage the DNS system. Managing meaning not to regulate or push it around but to know where to put more attention for improving parts of it. You know, what parts of this will make DNS cycle faster? What parts will make everything just click much easier? Uh, so, and then to wrap up, how did I get to 11 billion digs? Um, I had uh, 997,000 total DNS tests. That was from one of the, that, so each one of those represented 11 digs. Uh, there was, in the test, there were 11 things, I think it was 11 it went for. Um, and the glue list had 726,000 more digs to get their authoritative address. You add that, you add that up, and I use DC, because that's all I've ever learned how to use for a calculator, and I get to about 11 billion would have been digs out, out of all of this. So, so it only appeared in DC. It didn't appear in any, there was not 11 billion pieces of traffic out on the internet because of this. So um, that's what I have. Hopefully it's been entertaining, if nothing else. Any questions? Any, um, I know you all can go home. It's Sunday afternoon. Yeah. I've, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> I've just one comment regarding uh, DNS Flag Day. We did some research on that, and we also reached out to providers, and we cut it for the half. So half of the providers fixed it in within that range, so there is some improvement if you reach out to them and say, go and fix your service. Okay, so Many CLDs have seen this in January. Yeah, so, so a comment was that a lot of improvements were done in January and to reach out to, uh, to improve the, the, to say that, to vo avoid world disaster. Yeah, okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, you know, I have similar comments. You can see that, for example, we went basically to zero error rate during January. Right. Like, and it was constantly improving during January. Even there was a difference in the last week, which was like zero, or measurement error was the error rate. So the comment about CZ's experience, they brought down to zero error rate. Can you do that for the KSK, by the way? We're at 2%. <laughs> uh, that's good. It's good. Uh, yeah. It would be interesting to see if uh, this study to say what actually was forked in people's implementations, what was least or mostly was acting off the DNS software, but where the file was in front of it, mm -hmm. somewhere on yeah. the layer that just ate that thing. 
Yeah, one of the comments, the comment here is that the DNS firewalls are causing a lot of this. And I understand that's actually why uh, this tool was a little hard to get a yes, no answer. Um, I, have a lo I have a lot of experience with doing this kind of testing. And to me, a timeout always meant I didn't know what was going on out there. And so I wouldn't qualify that as, a, as an error, but as an unknown. But in this case here, it was different because sometimes you could get through there and when you got a timeout, that helped you pinpoint that the error was, you know, there's something else going on. Um, so knowing that would change how to analyze all the results, uh, but didn't get into the ability to quite understand all of the intricacies of that. I know Mark Andrews has spent a lot of time on this and helped contacting people with that. Certainly, he, he flooded me with too much information, basically. So I'm, some, I'm sure I'm familiar with that. So any other questions? All right. Uh, we hadn't um, for, uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, uh, in terms of attempting outreach to TLD operators. Um, for one thing, I think Mark had advertised that he already had. And I think by the time I ran this stuff, Mark was saying it was all pretty much taken care of. So I didn't even really think about doing that. Secondly, uh, we, yeah, and I can, it's kind of a, we have a certain set of, we can, GTLDs we can talk to. The CCTLDs, uh, there's an interesting uh, dynamic there where some CCTLDs want to operate on their own merits. Some appreciate information, and so it's not as, we're not as forthcoming with some of the, where we may, you know, probably should be. Um, and as far as uh, contacting anyone else involved here, um, we don't have a direct relation. We, like, we can't just go out to the, to the zone owners because that goes through the multi layers of, of who's in charge of the out there. Um, you know, it had, this test been done a year before Flag Day, and we found that there were things that need to be contacted. I'm sure we would have worked out how to do this. But given the timing that this was, you know, the data, all this data came from January 18th, which is last minute to even get this thing launched and running. Um, we, I, I didn't even try, I didn't even attempt the, uh, the outreach part of this, which would have been, which is actually what the, the goal was. Um, so I relied on other efforts out there, so. Yeah. To perform all the scans and you have the summary and it sits on flight four, I'm gonna say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the I was, problem I'm, is that it would consume too much memory for such yeah. a system. I mean, it wasn't optimized for com. Yeah. <laughs> half of half of half, the comment is that CZ has a tool for doing, partly because I'm too lazy to actually do research. I didn't look at it that much, but I also assumed that I'd have it would have blown it over anyway. So. I, I didn't feel that bad. I didn't bother. Um, and because I was looking at the code that, that Mark had given me, and I did use some of his reporting, and I decided just, you know, having an HTML page with red and green wasn't going to scale to 450 million delegate, you know, NS record. That's why I, 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 I would, it, it would have been brilliant to have, to have used that. But also because I didn't want to split my data up by TLD, because I, I didn't want to have any kind of a horse race of TLDs. Uh, that, that's one thing that's important. Yeah, I'm trying to look at this like broads of all, all of it out there. So, so. It, one thing that's important is to, you, know, you have to have goals in mind for when you do this research. Like, what do I want to measure, and what, if, what do I want to know, and what do I want to present? Um, in some cases, you don't want to do horse races, but you want to do a qualitative protocol thing. So, yeah, there are different ways to use the same tool. That's what it comes down to. So. Any final questions? Well, thank you, Edward. Thank you.